Hello and welcome to another Python tutorial. My name is Tom with LearnPythonTutorial.com and in today's tutorial we're going to talk about the rfind string method. Now the rfind string method is kind of it's basically similar to the find string method but the rfind string method finds the last occurrence in the string. So the far right occurrence of your substring. Now the rfind takes three arguments. One is mandatory and that's your substring, the string we're going to search for in our string object and then the starting index and then ending index. So let's take a look at um, an example here. So we'll say uh, we are learning Python and we're going to do r or period for a string method and then r find all right parentheses and then we're going to put our substring. So we're looking to find, let's see, n. All right, there's a couple of n's in here. You can see uh, there's an n here and there's an n here. All right, um, we're just going to use the mandatory substring to search for it. We don't want to give a start and ending index in this example. There's an n, n, n. So it's going to find the last one with the r find all the way to the right. So it's going to find this one. So when I hit return, it's going to return 21 to us. So that is the last occurrence of our substring of 21. We can check, we can actually uh, check that if we do something like, uh, let's do A, is we are learning Python, Hit return, length of A is 22. All right, so why 21? Why we return 21? Well, remember, um, with slicing, the ending index is always one before it, so 21 is going to be this right here, this end right here, right? It's actually 22 if you counted them, but it always returns one less. All right, so let's take some more looks at um, the R find string method, and we're going to do uh, A is equal to, so we're going to write that previous string object. Uh, let's just use this here. Uh, let's do this is a string in Python. All right. And we'll do R find. And we'll do, let's do I this time. And we're going to do a start index. Now we want to skip over this one. We know that one exists, but we want to see if there was one that starts here. So where would we give our start? So we go 0, 1, 2, 3. And we want to start this S. So we have a starting index of 3. And we don't want to count this I here. So we go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we'll say we'll end it at 6. Now the starting and ending indexes are optional. Um, so if you give a starting point, you technically don't have to give an ending point, but if you give an ending um, string index, you got to give a starting string index because it wouldn't know if we just did i and then 6, it's going to think it's the starting index, or if you did i comma space nothing there, comma 6, it's going to give you a syntax error. So let's uh, hit return, and then we'll call a, oh, we'll just call a. <laughs> I didn't realize that I set that to a variable. So <clears throat> right now we fi we are return five. So what happened here? Well, it went through. It skipped over this i. The search started here. The finds, the R find string method started here on s. Um, and then it looked at the space here. It doesn't exist. It found i at the fifth index position, and then the search stopped on s. So that's what happened there. Now let's take another look at another one. Uh, this is a string, and then we'll do R find I, and we just want to get a starting index, so we're going to say 5, all right, and we'll hit return, and we get 13. So what happens here is we skip the first I, and it goes to the second I. It actually looks at this one, but it says, oh, wait a second, I'm going to keep going. And then finds the, the last remaining I right here and returns that. So that's the 13th index position in our string object. Now, say we do the same string again. All right. 
and we're going to do our find. But I want my string to, or my search to start at the beginning of the string, but I want it to end uh, here. Now, how would I do that? Well, you just simply put a zero, comma, and then we're going to go uh, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, six and hit return and we're going to get five returned to us. So what happens here is this the find method starts at the beginning of the string here, looks at all these and says, oh, I found I here and it found I here and then the find method stops at the S and says, all right, well, this is the last I I found and returns it to you. So that's at the R find string method. Um, what happens if we don't find something in there? So let's, uh, I'm going to just push up on the arrow key, and I'm going to push over, because I'm getting lazy and don't feel like typing anymore. And let's do um, Z. I know there's no Zs in there. And we'll just leave these as is. I'm going to show you what happens if we don't find um, our substring in our string object. And I'll hit return. We get negative 1. All right. Negative 1 indicates to us that nothing was found in our string object. So negative one means nothing was found, all right? And I know all the examples I showed you here um, are just single, you know, character strings. It can be a bigger string. So we do this is a string. And we do R find. And we can do um, ing for the find this right here. And we're not gonna put a starting and ending, hit return. 13. So what happens here? Well, uh, find goes through the string object and looks and looks and looks and looks and looks and says, oh, wait a second, I found I and G here. Now it's going to return us the first um, index position where it starts, so 13. So if we go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, where the I is, and it returns us to 13. So that is the <coughs> sorry, that is the R find string method in Python. If you find if you have any questions, please leave a comment on YouTube or on our website at learnpythontutorial.com. Don't forget to like the video and don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.